everybody thank you for joining me for can we talk about it where we talk about that elephant in the room so you guys i've been doing some sewing and going to some sewing classes so i wanted to show you some of the stuff that i made so i made this nice little joy pillow so i'm saying i'm about to start selling these pillows and everything i think this is really really cute so i'll be selling this and i got two more to go with it give me a minute So I have this big love pillow also. I think this is really cute. This goes with the joy pillow. And then I have the peace pillow. So this is like my little peace pillow. So they all go together. And I have them in different little sizes that I've been doing them in. I just think these are so cute. And um, I also made this pillow. I'm not sure what I want to put on it yet, but it's like my gold pillow. I think I want to put black love on it, and the back of it is black. So I'm thinking about putting black love on that. I think that's a cute little pillow. I'm in the process of making a bear. It's not all the way finished, but it's on its way, and it's doing good. So um, i just been doing some things and sewing some things. I'm in the process of sewing a skirt. And um, when I get finished with it, I'm going to um, show it to you guys. So uh, I want to start off by saying that um, what is wrong with these Democrats? What is wrong with these people uh, being upset and walking up to people and asking them, who did you vote for? I voted for Jesus Christ. I told this lady I voted for Jesus Christ. Why didn't you vote for Kamala? Lady, if you don't get out of my face. People are frantic. They're losing their minds over this. You know what? The only thing I can say to you people is get a life. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. You still got to eat. You still got to live. You still got to work. I've There's people all over the Internet having nervous breakdowns because a woman who claims she's black didn't get into the White House. Now, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm not for it either or. How can you people that's out here having meltdowns, crying, trying to fight people because they didn't vote Democrat? Uh, I don't care how much you hate Trump. You still got to love him. But if you're not a Christian, then you're a devil. There's a lot of people out here who say they Christians that's losing their minds over this one person. If you're for Christ, why are you doing that? You're not for Christ. There's no way in the world you can be for Christ and you out here losing your mind. You out here telling folks if they get shot down in the streets, don't expect nobody to march for them and this, that, and the other. Okay, if you get shot down in the street, who you think going to march for you? Karma is something else. Keep on wishing bad on folks. You keep on wishing bad on folks all you want, and all it's going to do is come back and bite you in your butt. And I mean that just as sure as my name is Donna, I mean that. I, I just don't get you people. I don't get why you feel like you got to bully somebody into your way of thinking and like i said this is one of the one of the few countries to where you can say whatever you feel and it's not supposed to have any repercussions 
So a small block of folks that's been pushed around, bullied around, had the monarch mind control put on them, continue to get bullied, want you to continue to get bullied because they like it. No. Now, I didn't vote for either or, like I said. But the Democrats, they had their times. They didn't do anything for the country that I seen. So, uh, boo to them. And boo to you. You people who's out here spreading nothing but hate. Okay, Kamala didn't get in office. So, the world's still going to turn. You still going to live. You still going to work. What, you going to jump off a bridge? You going to kill yourself, fool? Because this woman didn't get into office. And it ain't just Democrats. Like I said, the government ought to be ashamed of themselves parting this country like this. Oh, this is the most important vote. This is the most important election. Every election is the most important election. They make it seem like that. The media just jumps all over the masses with this scare tactic of if you do this, if you do that, A, B, and C is going to happen to you when you're supposed to be looking to your to the hills, uh, looking to God. You're supposed to be looking to God, but you looking at what man can do for you. And just like they're going to fall, you're going to fall. Don't. Now, when Trump started doing this, don't come crying to us. Uh, you're in the country, too. Whatever he do to us, he do to you. Just like if it was Kamala was in office. Whatever she did to us, she would do to you. You act like you can't be touched. And I don't mean by a person or a thing. I'm talking about God. You're so busy crying your eyes out, you can literally cry yourself to death. Why you got a broken heart over somebody you don't know, but you don't care nothing about what your children wearing, who's bullying them, if they're getting enough sleep, if they're eating, but you're losing your mind over some broad that don't give two shakes of a lamb's tail about you. How about that? A lot of you people need to get a clue. You really do. You need to get a clue. I mean, the more I'm on this earth, the more I'm like, nothing surprises me. Why are people doing this? Why are people feeling this way? And it's just the way of the world. And you can't stop people from having their feelings. Just like the people that's out here losing their mind can't stop logical folks from having their feelings. Or or children of the light, you know, of, of the Lord from having their feelings. They're already trying to make this a one world government and we're heading in that direction. And a lot of you people don't see it. All you see is my people didn't get in. How is she your people and you don't even know her? Have you sat down with her? Have you ate with her? Do you know anything about her? All you know is what this person tell you. They smeared this woman all over the TV talking about she's for the little man. And they didn't say she was for the little man. She said They said she was for the middle class. The middle class is two to four hundred thousand and above. What about you? Are you making two to four hundred thousand dollars above? What is this union worker? You ain't never been around the union until it was time for you to vote. Kamala, Kamami. You got all your instructions from past people who've been through this. And this is only what I believe, and this is towards Miss Harris. You lost. Accept it with, with maturity. Be grateful that you were where you were and quit trying to seek vengeance on folks. Because trust and believe is going to come back on you sooner than you believe. This is what I believe you're doing. You're trying to do. It's over. The last time we talked, I said they said something about 20,000 votes 
were lost and they they wasn't counted in there. Excuse me, it was 20 million. So they're trying to say these 20 million votes were uh, Ms. Harris's um, votes and, and she should have won. See, here we go with all this trickery. The Dems, y'all was in for 48 years or maybe 12 years, probably longer than that. You lost the House. You lost the Senate, you lost the White House, that don't mean you still can't make a change. And until you do make a change and help out Foundation of Black Americans, you're going to always be pissing in a bucket. Because folks are tired of you running over them. Now you want to try to get back at somebody. And then you want to say, you evil and Trump evil. Let me just put that out there on the floor right now. You're both evil. But the things that you're saying, I'm just saying for myself. I don't believe uh, he's sending texts to black uh, university students talking about um, it's time for you to get back on the plantation and pick cotton. This is like a ploy to me. And I believe the Democrats are so upset, so beside themselves, so desperate, so down and out, so evil, so mean, not graceful. Now we all know that Trump ain't the best, but we all but I'm gonna tell you this, back in the day he was not renting to black folks, and yeah, we know that too. He was a younger person, it was a different time. I'm not saying the man didn't change, but all I know is when he was in office before, I wasn't affected by it. I lived a little bit better than what I was living when Harris was in office. I'm gonna say that. Woman you got too many emotions to be the president. You look like a vindictive person. You look like that. If you got angry with somebody and you were the president, you would mess the whole world up because of your feelings. You didn't even want to come out and say anything to your constituents after you lost. That's how depressed and low down and dirty you are because you was like okay for me it's over so I don't owe anybody any type of words of wisdom or anything I believe you was forced to go out there and I believe when you lost you hit the bottle because you look drained you look drained you look older than what you were you look just out of it and because I believe once again this is just my opinion when you get when you were thrust into this nomination by because Biden, who is suffering from an illness that nobody should suffer from, you had to step up. And I understand that. But you your policies, the way you think, the lies that come out your mouth, you should you shouldn't have never been in the nomination, you shouldn't have never been in the running, my dear. You should have. And you know this. But you feel like because you got Obama and Michael and all these people and Magic Johnson and Megan the Stallion, you'd have spent all this money and gave these people millions of dollars to, to talk for you. And you thought because you put on a black circus, a black hood show, that black folks was going black folks are a lot more intelligent than that. And I don't believe 78% of the black people voted for you. I don't believe that. I don't, how you guys fudge the numbers. And then I've heard other places where they said it was hardly nobody came out. No black folks came out to vote. And that's here too, where I live at. Then you got people like Roland Martin. I mean, do you kiss your family with that mouth? You got the nastiest, foulest mouth. Nobody can understand what you're saying from all the cuss words that come out your mouth. You couldn't even take the defeat with grace. You sitting up talking about folks and cussing and talking about it's this person's fault. And no, it was the way it was supposed to have been. That's, that's what it was. You need to get more maturity about yourself, sir. 
I was watching something you was doing. I didn't watch it all the way through because I just can't get through all of your cussing and that foulness and the disrespect that you have for black women. There's a black woman that you're sitting up and you guys talking, you know, these guys in the four squares and each one of them are in the square. And he was talking to this one lady and every time she says something, he's cutting her off. And I believe because it's his show. It doesn't matter. You're rude. You're rude. You're foul mouthed and you're rude. And you wouldn't let the sister talk because you're e because you have emotions. Because you're effeminate. This is just my opinion. You're effeminate. You can't even let a person you can't even let a woman because you didn't really do that to, to the man that was there. But you couldn't even let this woman get her words out before you start jumping up, jumping off off the bandwagon on your own bandwagon. You didn't even give her a, give her a chance to even have her say. But you want everybody to listen to you. Now, yeah, I got my little studio, and I don't have everybody behind the scenes working for me and 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 whatever. But I have it, and this is my platform. And I'm letting you know, Roland Martin, you are a little man in stature. You claim to be such this big person. No, you're not. You talk about folks, and then when they run up on you, you want to call the police. But you always talk about what you're going to do to somebody. Man, if you don't sit your little fat self down somewhere, you a foul mouth, little statured, fat man. That's all you are in my eye. I knew you when I was 11 years old and you used to go over to the Ingram's house. You weren't nothing then just by listening to you as a little kid and you're not nothing now. You need to pay attention to the people that you were around. There's probably a lot of people you were around when they were little kids and you were coming up and you were talking mega stuff. You were a coward then and you're a coward now. Right over there off Pickford and Six Mile. When it comes to the sisters, you always talking about how uh, you need to stand up. Now, I don't know if you're married to a white woman if not, or not, and that's your prerogative. But even if you are, that don't give you the right to downgrade no sister. I wish you would talk to me like that. I wish a roly would. We got to stop... Uh, let people talk to us crazy. And it's not just people like Roland Martin is some black coons, and that's how I feel, to get a little bit of authority, and then they come into your neighborhood, especially some of these black pastors who come visit your church, and you go to put your hand out to say, uh, God bless you, or how you doing, and they walk away like they're too good for you. Why are you in these churches? Because that happened to me at Unity Baptist Church. That happened to me. I went to approach a, a pastor there who came to speak, and he had, and you know, he had the little waves, and he thought he looked good. I mean, he was a nice-looking man, but you didn't look that good, brother. I'm speaking on what I experienced and what I've been through. I, I don't tell out my business. You was part of my business because you was in my life. They had uh, different politicians come over there. I don't even know if they still got politicians coming over there. I believe their pastor is a politician, which church and state should never mix. They should never come together. I'm not there anymore because of the propaganda. Then there was a split in the church because there was another pastor that came there and just ran through the money and ran amok, and this is just my opinion, and he allegedly, okay, let me say it like this, allegedly ran through the funds, all the CD accounts, split the church up and left and got another church. So I don't know what's going on there, but all I know is what I see. And I see a bunch of you scam artists because you're not really pastors. Some of y'all go to school to learn the Bible just so you can get over on folks. The church ain't supposed to be paying your rent, buying you a house, buying you a car, paying your medical. The church ain't supposed to be doing that. You supposed to be working. The Bible says if a man don't work, he don't eat. So you supposed to be working, not scheming off the people and taking advantage of them. 
And you folks ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Y'all give these people, you guys are so blinded. Y'all give these people your all in all. Your all in all. Some of these pastors, your grandmother, your grandfather, your grandparents be in these churches. And when they get ready to pass away, and, and, and I'm quite sure you guys have seen this all over YouTube too, because people are coming in mad than a mug. They done took these people's grandparents and parents' homes talking about they signed it over to you have no right to somebody else's inheritance ain't no no there's nowhere in the world some older folks and they probably had dementia or alzheimer's and you people took advantage of these folks and now you're being blasted all over youtube and facebook because you tried to take care take advantage of somebody's family and they blasted you all over the internet. And you got what you deserved. Some of us need to wake up. It's not about these pastors. It's not about that building. It's about you getting your life in order. It ain't about being on the choir. It's not about being an usher. It's not being a, about being a nurse. It's not about none of that. I used to work in the kitchen at one of my churches. I used to be on the nurses board at one of my churches. And I enjoyed what I did, but a lot of the people that I work with, I did not enjoy working with them. Because some of you people are over 65. You're a bunch of children. I used to work in the kitchen, and you already know, there's safety standards. And when I worked in the kitchen, People would try to come in with their coats on, give me this, give me. I'm not giving you nothing. This is for the community. A lot of those women down there did not like me because you're not stumping in my kitchen. You're not coming in here with your coat on. None of that is happening. Now, some of the women that I worked with, they was like, I'm so glad you down here because these folks, every time we come down here to cook, they come down here and try to get plates and, and uh, the styrofoam uh, things for their family. Uh, not on my watch, you know. You ain't got to like me. They didn't have to like me as long as I'm trying to please the Lord to the devil's hell you go. There's things that I've been thinking about, things that's been on my mind. Uh, I, I had a television show down at WHPR, WHPS in Highland Park. And I used to do that, and I did that from 2016, I believe, to 2021 or the beginning of 22. So I've been out of commission, but I still have something to say, and it's my right. And as the Lord um, prosper me, I'm going to be a blessing to other people, and I'm going to do what I have to do to get the word out on how people treat other people, like these senators. I, I'm, and I'm going to get the names of these uh, other people and, and start looking them up too because I need to say some things about them. Uh, I used to call her Nappy Head. I can't remember what her name is. It was San something. It wasn't Sanchez. It was San something. I can't remember. But some of these people, and, and I know the same thing may be in your state and in your city and this, that, and the other, but I'm about to start blasting these people. And that's another thing. When Gretchen Whitmore came on the scene, you guys, it was like big Gretch, this, that, and the other. Okay, it's time out for all of this glitz and glamour and get her to Cartier glasses. She's in office to do a job. And she's been in office for years. And the roads are not fixed. And every year, the same roads that she fixed the year before, they have to go back and do again. Because she's using these cheap materials and she's not doing the job right. Now, back in the 40s and the 50s, the, between the 30s and the 50s, when they started laying concrete all over the United States, this infrastructure came from these people with their hard work back then. We already know it's not going to last forever. But why are you putting all these cheap materials down? What are you pocketing? What are you doing with the money? I'm tired of these so-called people that want to work for us. You're not working for me. You don't speak for me. 
I, I represent Donna Sin. You don't represent me. I try to represent Christ, but you don't represent me. I don't need nobody to represent me. I can represent myself. And it's a shame that we have all these thugs and put in emotional uh, scam artists, you know, in politics. I mean, it was it was like that back in the days of the Lord. It's going to be that way now. But how dare a lot of you people claim that you, how dare you even walk into a church with your filthy minds and say, uh, I'm for the people. And you know you're not. And, and that goes for the mayor too. It's time for a change. You're in, and this is just my opinion once again. You're in everybody's cookie jar. And you sit up and you smile like, and, and now you're a butt kisser. Oh, I'll do, I'll work with Trump. I've worked with him before. I don't think, no, you're a Democrat though. I can imagine how you act when when Miss Harris didn't uh, win the presidency. presidency. But you're kissing, and this is how I feel, you'll kiss anybody's butt for a little bit of change. You got these police in the city running amok on these young men. You ain't speaking on that. Why do you have these young white race soldiers who's fresh out of cadet school waiting to slap a young black man in his head with a baton or a gun or a walkie-talkie or to tase them? Why do you have these people in our neighborhood? And you, and you know, I believe you know some of these people are racist and they look at Detroit because it's mostly black as a playground or as a way to bully folks because they were bullied when they was little. A lot of these police officers were like that when they were little. That's why they joined the force. Because they were bullied as little kids. They wasn't able to, uh, to uh, measure up to what their mothers and fathers, or they weren't able to measure up to, to what the masses thought about them, so they decided to be a cop. Oh, no, my granddaddy did it, and my father be, and all of y'all was cowards. And you just kept doing it because they did it. And you seen them do wrong, and what did you say in your mind? And this is how warped your mind is. When I grow up, I'm going to be like him. I'm going to hit me a nigga in the head, too. Then I got people coming on my page because this young man got stopped by the car. He should have had his license. You don't know the, the, none, all, everything that happens. You just know what I put on there. He did get his license as sponge. He just didn't have him with him. They was about to let him go, but they got mad because they seen me with a camera. This man was being respectful, and they was going to let him go. But they continued to push his buttons until he got to the point to where he started getting irate with them because they were doing the fool with him. I'm glad I was there for that young man. Because if he had a got irate and nobody was there to calm him down, he would have been a statistic. And speaking of that, I'm so sorry. I have to get this footage off to this young man because I've just been doing the most. But just know, DPD, the Sheriff's Department, any blue thug or blue line that rides through my neighborhood, I'm following you. I'm going to follow you. That's a fact. I'm going to follow you. I have the right to, to see you in your day-to-day -day operations. You are a public servant, and I have the right to follow you. I have the right to observe you. I have the right to ask you questions, as long as it's not interfering with your investigation or whatever it is you claim that you're doing. And you big breast, blonde, blue eyed bras out here, you guys better watch your mouths the way y'all talk to some of these elderly folks. A lot of these black women that you pull over, they're not young girls and you talk to them like you're their slave master and they're on a plantation and they're in a cart and buggy and you didn't pull them over talking to them like a bunch of idiots. I seen it, but I didn't catch it. Don't let me catch it because I'm going to put you all over the internet. Didn't your mama and daddy teach you to respect your elders? Oh, maybe they were back in the day of slavery or your, or your descendants was back in the day of slavery and that's the only way you know how to live so that's why you became a police officer. Don't let me catch you talking to my elders like that. You respect your elders. 
then you just pull over some of you, and, and this goes for the blue-eyed girls and the white and blue-eyed white guys too. Y'all, y'all sit in into y'all cruisers and y'all call yourself trying to scare somebody, and y'all pull them over for no reason at all, just trying to scare somebody. I know police officers, I still know them, and even back in the 90s, you guys was doing this. Back in the uh, mid-80s, early 90s, when I used to be a drinker, I used to go out bar hopping with police officers. And you know how we would bar hop? In the paddy wagon. So y'all take taxpayers' money and do whatever y'all want. Y'all take these dang on paddy wagons out and have a ball in these in these dang on paddy wagons. As soon as the bar is closed, this one particular instance I'm driving and I'm with these police officers, me and some of my friends, and we and they're like, watch this. Now it's two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. They put on their siren and pulled somebody over. The people pulled over and they pulled off the star laughing. And they thought that was the funniest thing. And I said, you know what? Somebody's going to do something bad to y'all. They were so drunk, they wasn't paying no attention to what I was saying. They, I've always been militant because my family was militant. Oh, Donna, it ain't nothing. It is something. You scaring somebody. You could have caused somebody to have an accident. Needless to say, the party broke up. But the guy who drove the paddy wagon, he was too drunk to go home to his girlfriend or whoever his wife. And he was like, can I crash on your couch? I let him crash on my couch. And when he got up, I fixed some breakfast. And I was like, you need to take uh, that vehicle back to the police department. There was people on my block, young boys, and I knew they did drugs. I knew they sold drugs. As soon as they left, why you got the police? Don't tell me what to do. I have friends. And if my friends don't suit or measure up to what you're doing, then maybe you don't need to be where I am. All of the police ain't bad. Some of them had good hearts, good people. I mean, just like you and me. But some of y'all are the devil's rejects. Some of you police are... Racist Ku Klan members with blue on. Some of you white officers, and I know some of them, they really nice. When I was growing up, I had a thing to where I didn't like no police officers, none. Because I seen them jump on my brothers. They were Black Panthers, so I seen them, I seen them almost beat one of my brothers within an inch of his life, and his eye was out the socket. I said right then and there, I will never like a police officer. But as I got older and got into the church, and I had to balance that stuff out. Everybody that's your color may not be for you, but everybody, everybody that's not your color may not be against you. That's why you have to have discernment in this lifetime. You can't smile at everybody, and you can't put your faith in everybody. You can't trust everybody that comes your way and that actually goes, and I'm about to switch again, for these homeless folks. A lot of you people ain't homeless. I say more than not, but some of you people, to you, this is a job. And then when people tell you they're not going to give you any money, you want to get an attitude and start calling folks out their name. Get a job, able-bodied woman, able-bodied man. Get a job. You so busy trying to jump on folks, punch a clock and knock eight hours out. Do that. Can you do that? Don't nobody like me. I can't work here. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, excuse, excuse, excuse. Then you know what? You'll never have any money. And when people like me come, don't ask me for no money. If I give you a look, please don't even open your mouth. Because I wear a body camera, and I'm going to let you know. Get a job. I work. My husband worked. I'm not giving you my money or anything my husband worked hard for. You're not getting it. Now, I will say this, there's been times where, there's been times where I've seen uh, young white men, old white men, black men, uh, old white women, young white women, black women, old and young, 
and I've seen them standing on the corner, and I've seen them in various places. If my spirit says, give them $20, give them however much money that I may have. Sometimes I, I, I gave somebody money, I didn't have it, but I gave it to them anyway. If my gut hits me like that, you, you can get everything that I got. But if it don't, and I start acting like I got the rents, please don't talk to me because you're not going to get it. You're really not. You're not going to get my money. I have to have a discernment. I have to feel something. There's people out here that's dressed better than me. There's people out here that have coach purses that's walking around in Nikes. I mean, there's people out here that got Cartier glasses on and you asking me for money? And this is a shame, too. There's people out here that put on um, army fatigues and act like they're veterans and try to get your money. That make it hard for the people who really do need that money. You know, I've heard people tell me, well, if you're going to pay your tithes, you got to pay your tithes. I'll pay my tithes when I give it to the poor. Or I'll split my tithes up and give some to the church and some to the poor. I don't got to give no church everything that I make. And it ain't none of your business everything that I make. But if, I'm, if I feel led to do something, and then it's like, oh, because uh, I've heard somebody say, ain't that your time's money? It's going to the poor. So the Lord understands. Don't tell me where to put my money. I'm not going to let nobody shame me into voting. I'm not going to let nobody shame me into where I put my money. I'm not going to let nobody shame me into giving them my money, rich or poor. I'm telling you guys, this world is so messed up. Not once did you hear anybody. Well, I think Trump said something about the veterans, but not much. What are you guys going to do about the veterans? And even the Democrats can still do something about that. That's just like they got the Dingo Veterans Hospital. Every veteran can't afford to go there. It's a business. How are you helping? You're helping them if they have the money to pay you. And then they go to these hospitals and they still got to pay you out of pocket. My husband is a veteran. He has to pay for his medication. He got to pay for his glasses. Why do they have to pay for anything? It's a business like everything else. Like UNICEF. Like the Cancer Society. The cure... The cure is, uh, they're they, they not looking for a cure. They're looking for some money. They're trying to patch you up so they can get your money. The cure is not in the medicine. It's in the chemo. It's in the radiation. It's in the doctor's appointments. It's in the ER visits. These people don't care about us and we need to start eating better and we need to start paying attention to what's going on around us. How are you sick and the EMS takes you to the hospital and then they send you a bill because you couldn't get there? Everything is a business. Nobody's compassionate anymore. Look at these UNICEFs and ASPC talking about animals. They, they, they take some of these animals and lock them up and train them to shake and all of this stuff. No, I'm not giving you my money. It's cats over here where I live at that I feed. So why am I giving you my money when I can help kitty cats and dogs around here? They had a couple of years ago, uh, give to Ukraine, give to these people, uh, there's people homeless, there's people homeless in the United States. A lot of this stuff is an act. They get these actors, make them seem like they live in, and some people probably are, but let their country take care of them. And I have nothing against helping somebody, but the Bible says if you don't help the people of your own household, you're worse than a sinner, you're worse than an infidel. Why are you sending all this money to other countries when you get homeless people, abused people, people with post-traumatic stress disorder, 
home, uh, homeless animals, uh, uh, children living on the street. You got all of this going on here in the United States. Why are you sending all that money over here to other people? And then bringing them in here, taking hard-earned money that we, the taxpayers, make. You're not asking us anything. You're not giving no, like, house of, uh, uh, what is it, they address the house. When they get on TV and they address the people, like, why, why aren't y'all doing that? Y'all take it upon yourself to just take our money and do whatever y'all want to do with it. That's why the Democrats are not in office right now. We got all of these people that claim they're for, and I'm just speaking for foundational black Americans now, that say they for us, but don't give us anything, won't give us anything, but they want our votes. Like, I want you guys, please, 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 and thank you, go to fab at 40.com slash Donna Stinson 2024. Please go there and vote for me. Um, I'm still at number four, but I'm doing good this Thursday. Uh, they will announce the top five, and then after that, they will announce a winner. I really, really want to win this. I'm going to put it down um, in the uh, box down below. I want you guys to vote for me. I really need your votes. I'm doing pretty well, but if I had 1,000, 2,000 people just go on there and vote for me, I think I would win this. I really do think I would win this, and it would mean the world to me for my brothers and sisters to look out for me like that. So please go to fab at 40.com slash Donna Stinson 2024. I appreciate you guys so much because I really want to win this. So you get a five page spread or you get a page in uh, New Beauty Magazine. So uh, it's, it's dealing with the uh, Breast Cancer Foundation and I've had breast cancer. That's, That's another, another reason why I wanted to uh, get, get into this contest because I've had breast cancer and open heart valve surgery. I've, I've had like 10 surgeries on my feet. feet. I mean, I've had quite a bit of surgeries, but I'm still thanking the Lord that I'm here and things are good for me. And I want things to be good for you guys too. But I do want you guys to please, please vote for me. And then when it comes to my pillows, if you guys want me to make you, you know, Pillows, pillows like, like this, this, I think these are so cute. cute. If, if you, you want me to make you like pillows like this, this I'm uh, uh, in the midst of making stuffed bears. When I'm finished with my beer, I'm going to show you the beer and everything. So I've been like really getting into sewing, and uh, I'm a private cook. So you can go to Donna Stinson 63 at gmail.com and uh, get in touch with me and uh, uh, if, if there's, there's anything, anything I can, can do for you, I also do wellness classes, you know, let um, women and uh, young men, but more so women, uh, uh, some churches I'll go to and uh, let them know, you know, what we should be doing for our body and how we should be, should be taking care of ourselves. I am not licensed. I'm only, I only go by the things that I know and how I'm taking care of myself. So I'm not licensed. I do not have any credentials in this area, so I'm going to let you know that. But I know uh, I've been on this earth for going on 62 years, and I've learned a lot, and I've done a lot. And I feel like the Lord has blessed my mind to be able to help others, and that's what I'm in. That's what I'm in this thing for, to help others. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. wrong. I mean, I, mean, I still, still need to live, and I need to get paid because I pay out myself. myself. So uh, please, uh, please, please, people, go, go to fabat40.com slash Donna Stinson 2024 and vote for me. I really appreciate that. So um, I want to get back to not only uh, on a more intimate level. Now, I always talk about the parents and uh, you guys. Um, some of you guys are good to your children. You look out for them. You make sure that they have uh, extracurriculum activities to do. And uh, you just the bee's knees. And I'm just so proud of a lot of you parents that do that. But then on the other hand, there are some parents that treat their kids like dirt. Shame on you. And you're going to the devil's hell if you don't turn this around. Then, then a lot, lot of you mothers go through things, things with your children, especially your daughters, and you wonder, 
why, why my daughter, daughter now she's grown, grown why she's, she's not talking to me? What did you do to her when you were younger? You made, you made her take, take care of all of your, your children. children. You, you jumped, jumped on her when she wouldn't take care of your children. children. She, she barely, barely made it out of high school because she was taking care of your children. children. And, and now, now you put her in a position to where she feel like she don't want any children. Because, because she, she was so busy taking, taking care of her brothers and sisters. And, and that goes the same, that's the same for these older, these older young men too. There was, there was no, no father, father in the house. house. You, you had to be the man in the house. And sometimes you even had to talk to your mother like she was your girlfriend in an abusive way, like take care of your kids, or like you was her father. Just I apologize for saying boyfriend. Some of you guys do talk like that, or have that seem like, like boyfriend, boyfriend girlfriend, girlfriend mentality with your mama. But, but I'm talking, talking about the ones who have to talk to their parents, their, their mother, like, like they're their, their father, father like, like their, their mother, mother don't know how to take care of their, their own children. children. Shame, Shame on you. you. I'm praying for you, young people. I'm praying for you with everything that's in me. I understand how some of you Young, young men, men and women, women especially, especially like from 15 until you get out the house or some of you guys like me had to get out the house. house. I, I left my home, my father, I met my father at 15, he emancipated me and, and I've been on my own ever since, on my own, living on my own. own. There were times when I didn't have anything to eat, I had to make sure my children ate first or my child ate first. And, and then, then I had to make sure, sure as, as, as time went on, I had other children. Then I ended up living in the streets, and I lost my children. And, and it was because of family. So, I mean, this, this is something really, really, really dear to my heart. heart. And, and I, I try, try not to get emotional with this because I went through a lot. And I had someone, don't ever let nobody touch you. I was living somewhere, and... The, the landlord was, was a mystic, mystic or something. something. And, and she, she said she wanted to read my palm. palm and I wasn't thinking about it. You know, I was young. I had to be probably in my mid-20s or something, something like that. And I gave her my hand. And she put the biggest curse on me. She said, you're going to lose all your children. And for 12 years, you're going to live hell. And then your children are going to come back to you. I take, I take that, that back. She, she said, but you're you going to let, she said, you're going to lose your children. children and for 12 years, you're going to go through hell. And, and after that, you know, your, your life is going to start picking up. up. I, I didn't believe her. her. I, ended I ended up losing my children for 20 years, years. almost 20 years. I ended, I ended up sleeping in the streets. streets. I was in abusive relationships. But, but thanks, thanks be to God, God before all this had happened, I was in the church, and I was saved, and I was in the church, and, and I ended up leaving the church because of the things that happened with my child. I just, you know, I just, I don't know. I was young. I was very young. I got saved at the age of 18. And I just, you know, there was nothing. I, and I feel like this now. There's nothing that the Lord wouldn't do for me. But, but do not, not never, never let nobody touch you and then speak, speak bad things into your life. There, there are true witches and warlocks out here. There, there are people that, that will pay people to come to you and put spells on you. Because the way she was touching my hands and rubbing my, the lines in my hands, I felt like I was being cursed. And I did get cursed. And, and I believe, and, and I, I didn't even believe it. That was the thing. I didn't even believe that something like this was true. After, After that, that happened, I started, I started getting into, into that. Now, I've had paranormal uh, activities going on around, around me. And, I mean, I, mean, I believe that just like there's, there's a God, God there's, there's a devil. devil. And I've seen things and, and, and been, been under attack. attack. And I've literally been in a place where I went to sleep. sleep. So... Let, Let me say, say it like this. this. I, was I was in rehab, rehab getting, getting my life together, together and I've, I've always done CNA work and direct care work, work and, 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 and then the church lady said, 
that, that she had an uh, adult foster, foster care home and nobody, nobody was in it yet, yet but she didn't, didn't want anybody to come in and tear up the windows and this, that, and the other. other. Seeing how I didn't have any place to stay, I could stay there until she got her clients in there and I could stay there and work so I can do living. So I didn't have a problem with it. When, when I, I tell, tell you why I was there, there, there was, was so much paranormal, paranormal activity, activity going on. on. At, at, in the, the daytime, it was okay, but when as soon as dust came, this, this feeling, feeling would come over me. me. I would be a bundle of nerves. I would be so tense. I went, I went to the bathroom, bathroom one day, so I'm coming out the dining room. room. There's, There's a bedroom here, and this is my bedroom over here. And the bathroom is right here, right between the two bedrooms. As, As I'm going, going in the bedroom, bedroom I see a silhouette like, like somebody's laying in the bed. bed. You can see, see the silhouette of the person. So I just act like I didn't see it because I did not want to ruffle anything's, anything's feathers. feathers. So, so I'm nervous, nervous. And, and I, I go, go to sleep. sleep. That, that night, night and, and the night, night that I go to sleep, I feel something cold and clammy on my hands, rubbing on my hands. Got this. So. I jumped, I jumped up, up and I looked, looked and, and all I seen was, was a bunch of, of looked like a bunch of sand just flying out the door. door. Have, Have you guys, guys ever seen the mummy, the, the one with um, Tom, Tom Cruise and how the mummy flew out the door, door like or, or flew around, around or whatever, whatever like in sand? sand that's, that's what I seen. And, and I really did think that I was just having a bad dream. So the next night, you know, things started happening, and I decided. This, this time, time I'm, I'm, if, if, if it happens, happens I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm woke. So, so it happened again. So I didn't, I didn't open up the eye that a person could see. I opened up my eye that was laying on the bed. bed. And I, I, I heard it again. I was, I was too scared, scared to get up. I think I was so I was so frightened to the point to where I passed out. And when I passed out, I was literally crawling out of the floorboards. All, All I, I seen, seen was black. black. I didn't see nothing. nothing. I didn't hear nothing. But I literally crawled up out of the floorboards. There was a portal there, and I crawled up out of the floorboards. And God is my witness. And I'm saying all this to let you guys know. Don't let people touch you. Don't let people speak over your life. Ask the Lord when things like that. Ask the Lord to rebuke these people. Because the devil is real. Witches are real. Warlocks are real. real. They, they will uh, 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 pray. There's people, people that will pray over your whole family for, for, for bad things to happen. Some, Some of us, we don't even need nobody to pray uh, over, uh, pray, pray bad things, things over us because we, we are our own demise. demise sometimes we 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 we, we, we make, make our, our own demise. demise. Those, Those of us that don't pay attention to history are doomed to repeat it. And, and what, what I mean is if you see your mother doing something or you see your grandmother doing something, don't you do it too. We, we all need, need each other. There's a lot of things, things going on, on but we know that everybody's, everybody's not going to be for you, but everybody's not going to be against you either. So, so once again, get in, get in touch with me at Donna Stinson. 63 at gmail.com. Talk, Talk to me about my pillows. pillows. I'll, I'll make you some nice pillows. Uh, when, when I get my um, bear finished, I'll, I'll make, make you guys some nice little bears, bears if you like. I do, I do wellness, wellness classes. I'm, I'm doing this contest, fabover40.com uh, at G, uh, uh, slash uh, Donna, Donna Stinson, uh, 2024. I, I love you guys. guys. And please, please be safe. And, and be, be strong, strong and, and stay, stay safe, safe and, and stay, stay strong. strong.